Okay, Val, so um, what else did you uh, think about the... Uh... Well, one of the things that impressed me was the honesty of people who, are, who have the virus and who are willing to come out and discuss it, and these are young people. Uh, you'll see in some of our interviews as we go along, uh, who are really willing to say, I have it, uh, I'm living with it, don't do like I do, don't do like I did, and um, life can be fine with it, but you, you can get it. I didn't expect to get it either. I was just like you yesterday. I was sitting there, and I have the virus. And so you can be... Don't fall into an illusion. That's what really affected me, because we all think, you know, if you smoke, I won't get lung cancer. Uh, if you have unprotected sex, I'm going to be the one who doesn't get HIV, which might turn into AIDS. So it could be you. Absolutely. It could be you. So, and, it's, and the numbers show it. And there are a lot of people walking around that you know and walk and talk to every day who, are, who have HIV, and you don't know it. So just because, you know, the person is not, uh, hasn't wasted away does not mean that they are, um, are not infected with HIV or it hasn't gone to AIDS. So that's Absolutely. important. And actually, if, if, and I, I wish we could have shown the whole panel, although some of the young people there were still a little concerned about, you know, not everyone on the panel wanted to be shown on, on camera. Which is understandable. Um, but, you know, as I said during that segment, everyone looked very healthy. You right. cannot tell who has this virus. And because of the shame, the rejection, the stigma, the discrimination that people experience because they have HIV, most people are not willing to tell you right. uh, that they have it. Right. And, you know, you get into a great situation with a couple of drinks and uh, it's dark and things are feeling kind of good. Ah, she won't. Even if you have it, you'll saw they won't get it this time. Now, you know? we're not going to cover it on, in this segment, but in, the, in a couple of uh, shows from now, one of the things we're going to do is go back and talk about things that parents need to do to empower their young people. While we were there, I happened to uh, hear a, a parent tell her 15-year-old daughter that she shouldn't be learning or reading some of the information at one of the tables. And uh, I was actually kind of dumbfounded, you know, that this woman did not want her young person to get some information. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. You don't want to wait till she starts having sex to start having conversations and giving her information. That's like telling a young, people get, a young person, get behind the wheel and drive the car. I'll teach you later <laughs> how to actually drive and what the rules of the game are. Right. We've got to empower our young people early. And, and, um, and more importantly, we need the adults out there. Too often, adults assume that they know, the inf know information that they really don't know. And the young people really need to rely on the, the adults whether it's a parent, a grandparent, uncle, older sibling, they need to rely on the people in their family for the right information. And a lot of times people don't want their family, like you said, kids to get the information from anywhere but home. But if you don't have the right information and you're doing something anecdotally that you learned as a teenager 20 <laughs> years ago, <laughs> you know, you can imagine how old your info might be or how your uh, how your hang-ups might influence what you're telling your children. So it's really important for young people to get correct information, and you may have it or you may not. But if, you, is there any, if there's anything, uh, I always tell people, if you don't want your kids to read it, please read it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so you can Abs tell them. Absolutely. And with today's, I mean, kids are sex texting now. I mean, the technology is so, so widespread and, and so fast these days that kids are getting the information whether you give it to them or not. Right. I mean, sex sells everything in our economy, you know, between, from, from baby products, you know, to cars. So sexual messages are always in our face, in our ears, either on a computer screen, a TV screen, the iPods. <laughs> I mean, technology, sex is everywhere. We have to have our adults in our communities to counterbalance some of this negative behavior or even mixed messages. You right. know, well, you're not old enough to do X, Y, and Z, you know, because that's not good for you. Well, if it's not good for me, why is it good for you to do? You know, and this is where I say practice what you preach and check what you're saying. You know, make sure that you are doing or modeling uh, healthy behavior. Okay. Well, we're going to go to commercial. Okay. And then we're going to come back with your famous condom relay. Yes, please don't go away because we really want you to know how to use condoms properly. How to put one on. We're going to give you driving instructions for using condoms today. Yeah, in the dark. In the, in the dark with your cl eyes closed, you know, we, we're going to look at all of those possibilities so that, you know, if you're blind, you should be able to put a condom on correctly. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back.